Hi, and welcome back to One Acre in the Napa Valley for a beautiful afternoon here in the Yauntville District for episode number four, which is going to revolve around the vineyard wire and the trellising aspects. There's five main components that we're going to take a look at today that have to do with uh, the vineyard trellising. The first one is going to be how we actually run out the wire. And uh, we've run the wire in the majority of the vineyard so far, but uh, left a row open so we can have a look at it together. I've run three wires here. To Two are fruiting wires and uh, one is the actual drip line wire. So we'll see how that runs out and how that goes together. Another important aspect of this is how we attach the growing stakes, the pencil stakes, to the wire itself. And that's what you see here in these little clips. They're almost kind of like little mouse traps. That's number two. Number three, we'll see how we actually run out the drip line itself and how that goes down. And then the fourth component that we'll examine are what you see here. They're pretty simple. It's just the clips of how the drip line attaches to the wire itself. And number five will be what you see right here, the actual emitter. So let's go get started and we'll start running some wire out and see how that goes together. Something that's really important about running wire out and uh, being able to stretch wire quickly and, and efficiently is having some sort of mechanism like a spool that you can put the coils of wire on. They typically come in thousand foot rolls or often even longer, some even 5,000 foot rolls. So to have something like this is really very helpful. You could run the wire out down the row and just kind of unravel the spool as you go, but it's, uh, it's really very difficult and this makes it a lot faster. So what I've done is I've kind of got this little spool here it's uh, designed in such a way that it's got these arms that slide out and I've actually just strapped it down to my little wagon. Wagons are great to use uh, in a lot of aspects of life and vineyards are, are certainly one of them. You can use all kinds of uh, wagon apparatuses to make things work. So what I'll do is uh, take the wire as you see here. Oh, and one other thing, vineyard wire. It comes in a number of different gauges. Uh, typically between 12 and 14 gauge wires about right. When you have a very long length of uh, uh, trellising to do, maybe 12 is good, but I'm using 13 and it's plenty thick enough gauge and it's nice to work with. Doesn't make it too stiff either. So I'll just uh, pull this out. You'll be able to see the spool begin to turn and I'm going to go down to the other end of the row. The object here is to pull it nice and steady, nice and slow, so it just spins off the spool real evenly. You could always use somebody to help you with it, but it's something that you can do on your own too, as you just walk it nice and steady, not overdoing the speed of it so it doesn't get into a rat's nest back there. So we'll just keep pulling nice and even. You can see the spools moving real steadily back there, just sitting on the little cart as we pull it along. So once we're down here at the far end, I'll just pull enough slack here out so I've got enough wire to work with. And instead of using um, another gripple or a way to uh, attach it in that way, I can pretty much just make a noose, kind of a double wrap here that allows the wire to cinch up as I tighten it down at the other end. It saves a little bit. You could put a gripper here, there'd be nothing wrong with it, but it just saves a little bit of, uh, a little bit of money to do it this way. If you, especially if you've got a, little, a lot of rows. So if you look here, if you see the double wrap that I've got, as I pull it, it'll cinch up and I can keep those nice and tight. And then what I do right here is I just wrap the wire around itself just like this, nice and tight like that, till I get uh, three, four turns on it like that. And then I'll just bend it back like this, back against itself and form a little, little noose right there. And then as it cinches down, I can keep it right on the spot where I want it and that'll pull nice and tight. So let's walk back down to the other end and I'll show you how we attach it down there. And as I walk back, what I'll do is I'll kind of keep this stretched out a little bit and hook it in the little notches where the fruiting wire will go. And we'll hook another one in. There we go. Good pair of gloves is important to use too. So we're just about to the end here. Got one last post to go keeping the wire nice and taut as I come along. And now what I'll do is I'll come out a little bit further and uh, cut the wire so I've got enough slack to wrap it around right about there. And we'll set our pliers down. So once we've got the wire cut like we have here, we've got, oh, two, two and a half feet or so of uh, bypass from the end of the anchor post. Now what we'll do is put one of our little grippers on and we'll slide it in right here, right into the wire. And we're going to slide this all the way down here, past the post, 
to approximately the area that we want this to sit in pretty much right in this area there. Now I'm going to take the end of the wire, once that's positioned, I'm going to feed it through my eyelet right here that I've already got in place and I'm going to come around to the other side of the post and feed that back through my little gripper. Let's attach this down here. We'll tighten it up. Now I want my gripper in just about the same spot as the other ones were, so now I will take this, slide it right through the gripper, just like that, and get this cinched up a little bit. And what we've got is a nice tool that we can use, get that a little tighter, that will allow us to get it nice and tight. And that's what you see right here. This is a, a gripple tightener. You open it up like this and see as I push it further open, you can see that the, the grasping bar opens up. That's what will hold on to the wire. So how you actually attach it is this will slide in, the top of the wire will feed in right there, and then this piece of the wire fits in the, the little arm that comes up. So we get it nice and tight just like that so it's nice and taut and you've got some tension on the wire. You don't want to get it too tight because well with a tool like this you could probably even get it so tight that you started to pull the post back together. So just tight like that. And once we've got the, the wire nice and taut like that, just come along, we'll cut our, uh, cut our piece off and wrap it right around. And so there we've got our two fruiting wires and of course our drip line wire. So next, let's have a look at how we attach the pencil stakes or the growing stakes to the wire we just ran. And to do that, I'll run and get some clips and we'll take a look. So I brought the bag of clips along, so you can see these, they come in a couple of hundred per bag, just like that, pretty simple like that. Now what these look like is uh, they're little pieces of metal with some indentations that are designed to actually hold the uh, growing stake to the wire. And as you can see right here, get kind of an up close shot for you, it's got this little indentation, a point here where it clips onto the wire, and then this is the uh, part that actually hooks to the wire on the opposite side. So I'll show you how we put these on. Now before we do, you'll probably notice here, if you look at the pencil stake, this is from when I put it in when we were putting the posts in. It's sticking up maybe four or five inches or so. So what you want is you want to drive that back down a little bit. Oh, till it's maybe a, an inch or so above the wire itself. We'll bring it down flat, just about like that. Now to show how these go on, I'll let that back just a touch. So to show how these go on, this is the point that's going to go around the, the pencil stake itself. So we'll pull it close. This actually hooks on the wire on the other side and then this comes around and feeds up underneath. Now to make it a little easier, you can just do it with your fingers, but to make it a little bit easier, I use another clip like this to attach it, to spin it around, because after a whole day of this your fingers get kind of sore, and you can just clip it around just like that. So let's do another one so you can see it. So on our lower fruiting wire, once again, see it just hooks over here, then we'll bring the pencil stake, the growing stake in, we'll bend it over top, and then I'm going to use this to feed it underneath and just use it to spin it just like that on. We'll do one more. After you do these for a while, you can get kind of kind of fast on it. So just like that, and we'll hook these underneath just as a way to wedge them in, and there we go. And that's how we hook the pencil stakes on. So next, uh, that's component number two. Let's go to number three. It's the actual drip line itself. I'll go load that up on the spool. And we'll see how we can do that. So I've traded out my spool of wire for a spool of drip line. Drip line like this comes in a whole variety of different sizes. Half inch can work out as well as any. But once again, just like the wire, having something for it to unwind on just like this is, is really essential to make it go quickly. So I'm going to take off for the other end down there and you can see how this just spools off real easily. Just like this and I'll meet you down at the other side. Now pulling the line out like this is something that you uh, can do by yourself. It's often helpful to have another person though, if you've got the help, just to kind of watch the spool on the other end. Now once we get down this far, I'm going to run this out, oh, a couple of feet or so beyond where the last uh, grape plant will go, the last vine will go. And what I'll do, how I'll seal this off, you could use a number of ways to close the end of that, but probably one of the easiest ways is just to bend it like this and wrap some, some tying tape around it and it works just as well. 
Now, that's component number three that we we're going to look at. So look at, let's look at number four. And that's how we actually attach that to the wire itself. So let's go back over here. These clips uh, come about 500 to a bag. You can see them right here. And uh, we'll attach these to the wire and then attach the drip line to it. These are probably a little easier to put on without your gloves on. So let me just take my gloves off here for a second. And uh, you can see them. They're just, they're just small little clips. And you can see here they... Uh, have a way to attach to the wire. Let me set those in there. They've got a way to attach to the wire, which will be right here. And then, of course, this opening is for the drip line to fit in. So typically, I'll put one of these uh, between every plant. That, that'll clip in like this. And then our drip line will come right like that. We'll do, uh, let's do one more, show you. Here's another one. We'll come over here to this side, same thing. Put our clip in, just like that and then we'll attach it. And I'll just work my way all the way down the row, hooking them up like that. Now, you might have noticed right behind me here, you can see the trench that I was standing in. This is where I'm going to uh, run the uh, PVC supply line, the main line that'll hook into these. What's happened is it was so wet this winter that this trench pretty much turned into a creek. So there was no way for me to be able to put any kind of piping. In fact, even if you look down in the dirt right in here, you still see it's actually still pretty moist down in there. So we We'll dig this out a little bit, and uh, in the next episode, we'll show how those go on. So, just one more uh, factor or one more component, number five, and that's the drip emitters. So let's go down to the other end, and I'll show you how those go on. So here's our box of drip emitters. We've got the line all nice and attached with the clips. I'll show you how these go on. Um, drip emitters can come in a variety of different gallons per hour. Um, these happen to, to be one half of a gallon per hour drip emitters. They come in one gallon an hour, all different kinds of sizes. The important part though about this and why you want to size it is it has a lot to do with how much volume or capacity you're going to be feeding into the system. So if you don't have the volume to run one hour per every drip emitter, you need to get some smaller ones. Just depends as you size out your irrigation system. These go in pretty easily. Um, what you don't want to do is put these directly on the um, rootstock of the plant. So they should be offset just slightly. So typically what I'll do is kind of go about a fist width out and then you use a, a tool just like this. You can see how this works. It just punctures the, the drip line. So if you come out about the width of a fist and we'll just put it right on there, puncture it just like that, and then we'll find the hole on the other side. Tip that right up. You can see our holes right there and we'll slide our little emitter right in just like that and it slips in. So, and that's about the right width. That way when it drips, the roots will spread out a little bit. So let's do one more. We can come down here. So same, about a fist width out. We'll puncture the line once again, just like that. Find the hole on the other side and slide it right up in, just like that. So there we have number five, component number five. So just to go back and review just a little bit, the five things that we uh, looked at today were the actual installation of the wire both uh, fruiting wires, which I run too, just so I've got an extra one, depending on the vigor of the plants, and uh, also that included the drip line wire. That was number one, all the wire. Number two were the little clips that we put on that attach this to the wire. Number three was uh, the drip line itself. Number four are our clips to hold the drip line to the wire. And our fifth one that we just saw is our drip emitter. So it's about time for us to pack up this afternoon and head out. Hope what you saw has been a little bit helpful in seeing how the different components of the vineyard go together. We've still got quite a bit of work to do over the next few weeks, get our irrigation system in, and of course the planting will be coming up very soon. So uh, until then, thanks very much uh, for joining us here in the Napa Valley, and uh, we'll be seeing you soon.